Hello, hello, everyone. You listen to another episode of The Fight Game with Tim McCain. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing bare knuckle fighter and mixed martial artist Brad Kelly. How you doing today, sir? All right. How you doing, brother? Doing good. I'm doing good. So your very first uh, bare knuckle fight, you fought against uh, Kane Tomlinson, the beast. And yes. I'm going to tell you, that fight was an amazing fight. I mean, you were just going back and forth. The headshot, I mean, the, the, the shots to the heads were just incredible. I remember um, uh, Shaq told Kane that it was his favorite fight. Really? Uh, yes, sir. He said it was his favorite fight. And uh, what was just your experience um, being in a stage like Bare Knuckle and having the whole world see it? It, it was different, very different, because um, I've been fighting most, most of my whole career, like in Mississippi, local shows, you know, I ventured out, you know, to Alabama a few times, but something I never had cameras that that big in my face. Or the, the, some reason the lights was a lot brighter, um, so it, it was it was different, a lot different. Then I see Shaq over there, Dan Mergliata from the UFC, and I was just like, man, this is this is a step up right here, you know. So it was it was a lot different. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So just take us through that through that time period. Was there any like nervousness that you were going through, or and how did you like channel that? Not not as far as uh, the fight nerves. I have been fighting 13 years. So, I mean, it, it's a fight. It's going to happen regardless of, you know. Nice. You know, uh, but a different stage, being in front of the whole world, yeah, it was, a, it was a little different. It was a little pressure on my shoulders, you know. And I, I didn't know if I was going to break my hands or, or get injured, be able to work, or anything like that. You know, I felt a little less protected um, with my hands being, like, gloveless. But yes. Other than that, man, it's like it, it was all right. It wasn't too bad. Well, I want you to speak on that, really, because, um, you know, that's, that's there's a lot of misconceptions with bare knuckle fighting. You know, uh, I was just at a gym the other day and I was like, would you ever do a bare knuckle fight? He was like, nah, those guys, those guys are the real deal. I need some padding on mine. And yeah. so like, there's this misconception that bare knuckle uh, champion fighting championships was just fighting in bare knuckle was much more dangerous than a boxing or mixed martial arts. As somebody who's been, um, who's fought at bare knuckle and has signed a three year, uh, three fight contract. What is some of your experiences fighting in bare knuckle or some of these over exaggerated in these uh, beliefs? Um, I was, like I said, I was really worried about breaking my hands. I was really worried about that. And uh, I did get split open a little easier than, I'm ne I never bled bled in a fight. And in a fight because of the glove. And Kane's got some of the big old mechanic knuckles. Man. <laughs> he's a tough, he's a tough dude. Yes, sir. But, uh, yeah, I mean, but one misconception is, I mean, everybody thinks boxers are going to come in there and like rule rule the sport because they're professional boxers. Man, it's a fight in there. Like it's not, it's not just slipping in. You got to be accurate with with those punches, you know. So I mean, that that's that's my take on it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How did um, you being a striker? help you in your first fight? And what kind of advantages do you think you would have over someone that doesn't have that same striking background? Um, well, like I said, I thought, I thought because I, I was a good striker that it was going to be easy to go in there and slip and move. But man, when you first see that, that knuckle come by your face in slow motion, it's like, okay, I, you got to, you got to be accurate. You got to, you don't want to get hit with that. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Uh, but I think I think my defense is gonna get me a lot further than a lot of people because I have such a good defense. The best the best offense is having a great defense. And I think yes, sir. great I think if you have a great defense and in, in bare knuckle, I think you're gonna make it a long way. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So take us back to the beginning. When did your love for the fight game begin? Uh in my fourth amateur fight. Mm. I, yeah, I when I uh, first I first my first fight I fought a guy that was seven and two, and I beat him in the second round. Wow. Yeah, John Dixon was the first guy I ever trained with. I don't know if you ever heard of him. He's a Hall of Famer, uh, world champion kickboxer, and I I went in the military. And when I got out of boot camp, I was supposed to go to Iraq in 2010. Oh, wow. And um, I had a buddy that found an MMA gym on the coast in Biloxi. He said, Hey, let's go try it out. I said, All right, I'll try it out. So I went down there and we started doing like, I started doing good naturally, just as an aggressive person, I started doing good in it. So I, I kind of like, all right, well, I want to try this. Well, after six months, I was like, hey, I want to fight. I want to fight. I want to fight. I got to go to Iraq in you know, a few months. I want to fight before I go. 
So finally, he got he got me a fight, seven and two guy, first fight. Wow. Like, yeah. So I ended up beating him in the in the second round, and then I fought my second fight. I knocked the guy out in fifty five seconds. Mm. My third fight, I had to face some adversity. I fought okay. I, I fought at one seventy, mm. and uh, the guy that I fought come from one ninety six to one seventy. And I was wow. a legit one seventy. So by the time we fought, we was he was twenty pounds heavier than me, and right. it I, I could not knock him out. And I had I had power to knock him out, but anyway, uh, I hit him on the button, and every time I hit him, he just come forward, come forward, come forward. So I got tired, I got beat, and when I tasted that, I was like, man, this this sucks. But then a guy, my my next fight, he talked crap to me the whole time, you know. Oh, if I if I was you know you ought to beat ought to beat Zebulon, you know, I'd have did this, I'd have did that, and we ended up fighting, and I ended up knocking him out. Like cold knocked him out. Wow. So then after 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 overcoming exhaustion for a three round fight, getting beat, ended up getting fight of the night. And then I went and knocked that dude out to talk crap to me. <laughs> like, you know what? I love this. This is what I love to do. And then everybody started recognizing me. Like, man, he's got hard to do. He can fight. You know, he'll stay in there whether he's getting beat or not. So that's when I started loving it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So a fourth amateur fight. Fourth amateur fight. Okay. So I have a two part question. Do you feel um, how much did your military background help you as a fighter? And then also take us back to your um, third fight when you fought that guy. Um, and ultimately, it was a tough, tough fight. I think you lost that fight. You, you say you lost that yeah, fight. Yeah, I lost, I lost my split decision. Ta- uh, take us through, you know, mentally how you overcame that, um, that loss and to also continue on with the sport. Um, overcoming the loss was just, you know, you just got to reset. And that's, that's all about having a strong mind. You know, it's like, okay, I'm prideful. So I had to, I had to swallow that, you know, it's a tough pill to swallow when, when, when you used to you beat a guy then you knock a guy out quick. And then everybody's like looking at you like you're up and coming. And all of a sudden you just get tired in the first round and then you have to struggle through the next two rounds. It's like, man, this is, this is exhausting. Is this what I really want to do? Yeah. And then me personally, I feed off of that. Like I feed off of that. Okay. I just got feed. I just, you know, I got, I got embarrassed, you know, so I want to pick myself back up and I want to carry on. Same thing with the military. When I went in the military, I was 246 pounds. Uh, my stepmom told me I would not make it in the military because I had an authority problem. And uh-huh. I ended up graduating out of 255 people. I graduated second out of my whole class. Wow. Because every time, every time things got hard, every time we went on a five mile run and I, I was exhausted. I ended up being at the front of the line in front of everybody, right beside the drill sergeant. So every time, I, every time I got exhausted, I would think about my stepmom telling me I wouldn't make it. So speak on that, actually. Um, just for anyone listening to this, sometimes you not you might not necessarily have that family support. Sometimes you might not have. Um, let's say you take a loss, and the people who you thought were with you, you know, when you took that out, they weren't the same way. So just explain like how you overcame that situations and where your mindset, where you had to take your mindset to overcome that. Self-motivated, man. Self-motivated. Uh, just not letting anybody put you down, not letting anybody like take anything away from you. You know, uh, me, the, the more somebody tells me I can't do something, the more I'm going to like try to prove to them, like, hey, I, I can do this, you know. Mm. So that's how, that's how I look at it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, were there any combat figures, sports figures that you grew up watching that you that you liked, whether it be boxing, mixed martial arts, or anything? Frankie Edgar. Frankie Edgar. Why Frankie Edgar? Because he's a dog. <laughs> he's a dog, man. Like when he fought Gray Manier, uh, Gray Manier like bullied him the first round. I'm like, he almost knocked him out. I seen him do a back roll. He got wobbled and then still come back and just you know beat him. So wow. we, to, to me, Frankie's got some the, the biggest heart in the USC. Yes, you know? sir. Yes, sir. No, well, it's not all about it's not all about the, the trash talking and, and the publicity and all that. You know, when you, when you got a legit fighter like Frankie, that's that's somebody I look up to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what's the most important element of a fighter? The heart, the skill or the mentality of the fighter? I think the heart and the mental go hand in hand. Okay. You can't have one without the other. Like if you can't break your, if, if you can't break yourself mentally, you're not gonna be able to do anything physically in a fight. Like if you don't have the mental to to go through the physical, you gotta have the mental. You gotta have the mental. Why is why is um 
the mental and the heart more important than the skill? Because you can you can have skill all day long, but if you get hurt, you get cracked, you ain't gonna make it. You gonna give up. You know? Yes, sir. You, you can cardi- cardio and mental. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can be the best fighter in the world, man. If you ain't got cardio, you ain't going to be able to stand up. You can't stand up, you can't fight. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who are some of the, the greatest battles that you've faced throughout your career? Robert Dunn. Robert Dunn. Why Robert Dunn? Because I fought him three times. <laughs> lost, lost twice to him. He's one of the toughest dudes I ever met in my life. Um, the first first time I fought him was an amateur, and we, we went – Got fight of the night. It was a split decision. I felt like I beat him up on the feet, but he always took me down. He was a Gracie United Jiu Jitsu guy. Mm. And uh, so I lost that fight. And then I took some time off and fought him again as a pro. Same thing. Started off on the feet, and I'd been working some like teeps and, and different leg kicks and stuff like that. And I threw a teep to him. He dropped me with a right hand. Bam. I was like, oh man, here we are again. When he was right on me. <laughs> Ended up choking me out. I went and made it through the first round. In the second round, I started coming back. Well, I took him down. When I took him down, I fell into a uh, – what was he calling me with? Caught me in a triangle. I defended the triangle. He switched it to an arm bar. Okay. He was slick with it because he, he let he let loose with the arm bar. And when I turned, he threw, he locked up another triangle. And I was like, oh, man, I just put myself in a triangle. So I ended up, I ended up tapping out. Well, our third fight, the best fight, Um. He hurt me in the first round with a spinning back kick that probably would have knocked me out in the crowd if, if the cage hadn't been there. I think he caught me quick. <laughs> and that's what I had been working on. And my coach was like, don't you try to get that back? Don't you try to get it back? Because even in sparring, man, if somebody catches me, I'm immediately going to catch him back with the same thing. Oh. I, I just have to, I have to get that back. That's just who I am. And uh, But anyway, so he caught me with that kick. And – he had beat me twice, so in the first round, I was kind of hesitant. I was like, I don't want him to take me down. I don't want him to take me down, so I kept my distance. Kind of boring in the first round. Well, after he caught me with that, then he caught me with another spinning back kick to the liver. And then mm-hmm. he started planting down knees on me. And I was like, oh, man, dude, you know what? My dog come out. I said, as soon as this, it did, man, it, it, I said, you know what? We're fighting now. This is a fight right now. And I ended up breaking his jaw in half. Woo! I smacked my thumb in the second round, and we both still finished the fight. And I, I ended up beating him by unanimous decision. Wow. So that was my favorite fight and my toughest fight. Your toughest fight. Wow. So just talk about the respect level you have for Robert Dunn just being in those battles with him. I mean. Oh, man, dude. We're, I mean, every, anytime you fight somebody, you're going to have that that buddy, you know, after, after the fight. You know, you're going to have a beer or whatever. But when you go through those kind of fights, Three of them, and that, that's a different kind of respect level right there. So, I mean, I, anything he does in life, man, I'm going I'm to have his back 100%. That's amazing. Yeah. So, why is it – it just seems like in the fight game, in, in sports in general, it just seems like there's this brotherhood, this sisterhood that um that just radiates within sports culture. Why do you think there, that is? Because not everybody wants to do this. Mm. Not, not everybody wants to be a fighter, man. I mean, people dream about it. People talk about, you know, behind a behind a computer, behind a, a phone, you know, they can sit on a couch drinking a beer, you know, about what they would do. But until they step inside a cage or a ring or put a pair of gloves on or even go into an MMA gym, you know, it's just something about that that world, everybody's got their back. And it and it's weird because every time we go to a fight, like we have, you know, 28, 30 fighters in a room. And I just look around the room and I'm like, man, if a fight broke loose right now. If a fight broke loose, <laughs> these are bad people in this room. Right here. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are the people I want to go to go to battle with. Somebody that trains like I do every day. <laughs> same thing with military. Same thing with military. Not everybody wants to be in the military. No. So fighting in the military kind of go hand in hand with me. You know, it's all about a brotherhood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like that. I like that. So what is success to Brad Kelly? Ah, oh, man. Not wasting 13 years of fighting just because of my age. Because mm. I'm 38 years old. And, dude, I, uh, <clears throat> I've been through some stuff while I'm fighting. Um, it's emotional to me. And hold on for a second. 
you ever been like, you know, you want to be great at, at one thing in life? Yes. And I feel like I feel like fighting is my greatness. You know, um, I feel like that's what I'm good at. It's, it's all I'm good at. Um, oh, man, I got to take a second. This is emotional for me. I'm sorry. You're good. Take your time. Um, I've overcome a lot in my life. And fighting is, is one thing, like, when I get to the gym, like, I can release that. You know what I mean? And um, to have everybody look at me as being, like, a, a great fighter. Like, I just want to get my name out there and, and succeed at that and make a name for myself as, as a fighter. You know, if, if, I done, if, I made it, if I made it through anything in life, I wanted to be a, as a fighter. You know, that's what I take pride in. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know, man. Um, just get emotional and start talking about greatness. You know what That's I mean? Good. That's good. I mean, I, I like I like what you said there, and people see your greatness because whether you're a kid, whether you're an adult, they love to see people chase their dreams, uh, yes. and you inspire people. So, just take us through your mental when somebody comes to you and they said, I want to do what you're doing. I see what you're doing and you inspired me to go better beyond my own situation. What yeah. does that mean to you? Just, I mean, it means a lot. And, and that's, that's why I want to use like um, this platform right here. I always tell I have a buddy, Jamal Tatum. Uh, we always talk about helping people out, you know, if we ever make it big or something. And I want to use like BKFC as a platform to help people. Like help kids out that's struggling, you know, because I, I grew up rough, man. Like every fighter grows up rough, right? But I'm the I'm the I'm nobody special. But in my mind, like I use fighting to fuel to fuel me. And if if I think if if somebody finds a passion in that, you know, just never just never quit. Just just keep going no matter what anybody tells you, just just keep fighting, you know. Um, but I do wanna I do wanna help people. And if I can use BKFC, it's the biggest platform out there right now besides UFC. You know, they're growing. So I, I feel like my next few fights, I'm going to get a name for myself. Like, I'm going to fight, man. I'm going to get a name for myself. Yes, sir. So, and, I, and I help anybody out. In any way I can, I'm going to help somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So last question. What are your personal keys to success that you use today? And also, what are some of the keys of success you would tell someone who else, someone who wants to be in your position one day? As far as, um, as far as fighting, like my success? Yes, as far as fighting and also as a man. Um, with fighting, one of my successes is, is venturing out, um, venturing out to other gyms, you know, tra cross training with, with different fighters and don't, don't just get stuck in one spot. Don't get stuck in a hometown, in a small town and, and think, you know, just because you don't want to like make your gym look bad by venturing out and going, and going and getting knowledge somewhere else. The thing is, is like when you become one of the better athletes or better strikers or better grapplers in your gym and you don't have anybody to push you, like you have to venture out and go be with somebody that is better than you. Because if, if you're the best one in the gym, you're not going to grow. So I would rather go to a gym personally. Like when I fought Brandon Davis, um, I lost I lost a decision to him. You know, he just got cut from the UFC. One, one of the better strikers on the coast. I'm one of the better strikers in my town. And we had a good a good fight. But I figured, you know, okay, if I lost, if I lost to this man, I'm going to go train with him. Mm. And, you know, I've learned a lot from him. Just by going down there and putting myself around, because I feel like you know he is a better striker, he's a better coach, you know. So that, that's that's my outlook. If you get so good in one place, go to somewhere else. Wow, you know, I like always look, always look for something better. Hmm. Got you. I got you. And as a man, success as a man, work hard. Work hard. Work hard, man. Like just don't ever quit working. Don't ever quit hustling. Don't ever quit hustling. Yes, sir. I love it. I love it. Where can people find you on social media? And when do you want to fight next? Um, so I just I just signed a three fight deal uh, with BKFC. 
they just they just called me and told me uh asked me if I wanted to fight mid March or late March. They're waiting on confirmation for a venue, but I do have a fight in March. And uh MMA DK32 on Instagram and then Brad Kelly on Facebook. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Brad, for your time. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, brother.